Welcome to Lecture Online. Uh, now we're still talking about heat transfer and so far we've talked about conduction, we talked about convection, now we're going to talk about radiation. And let's start, let's talk about the basics of what uh, heat transfer through radiation is. So you, what you need is you need an object that has a certain size and theref therefore a certain surface area because the radiation does depend upon how much surface there is for it to be able to radiate out. So objects radiate heat through the surface, away from the surface. So the amount of dQ dt, the amount of heat being taken away from an object does depend, will be proportional to the area, the, the surface area of the object. The, whoop, almost hitting the flag here. Um, the next thing is it also depends on the temperature. So not only does this object have a surface area, it also will be kept at some temperature right here. And therefore, the dQ dt will depend on the temperature, but not just t, it will depend on t to the fourth power. Which is kind of interesting because if you have two identical objects, both with the very same surface area, and one object is twice as hot as the other, then because of this, this relationship here, the amount of heat radiated by the hotter one will, will be 16 times as much because if it's 2t instead of 1t, 2t to the fourth power will give you 16t and uh, therefore 16 times as much heat will be generated. If two similar objects are at different temperatures, let's say if two, two similar objects are, um, hmm, let me start it over again, if, um, if you have two objects that are identical in size but let's say that this one is at temperature t and this one is at temperature 3t well, 3t to the fourth power, 3 to the fourth power is 81. That means this object will radiate, radiate it out 81 times as much heat as this one. And again, to finish the example, let's say that one object is at 10 times the temperature as the other one. <clears throat> you can see that 10 to the fourth power is 10,000. Then this object will radiate out 10,000 times as much heat as this one, simply by it being 10 times as hot. So you can see that the temperature is a very important component to, to determine how much heat is being radiated out from a hot object. So now how do we turn this into an equation? How do we write dQ dt is equal to, well obviously you will need an a and a t to the fourth power, but what else do you need in here? Well you need two things. You need a constant, which is the constant sigma, and then you need the emissivity of the material. So we'll look at these things in just a moment. First of all, let's start with the constant. The constant sigma is equal to 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. That would be watts per meter squared and Kelvin to the fourth power. So instead of using centigrade degrees, we're going to go to Kelvin because for this equation to work, the temperature must be expressed in Kelvin. Now, of course, the size of the degrees is the same, but it's, in, it's an important reminder that we plug in the temperature in Kelvin. So, in other words, let's say that this temperature is at 10 degrees centigrade, and this one here is at 20 degrees centigrade. Would you say that the temperature here is twice the temperature here? And that's not the case because when we convert that to Kelvin, this would then be a 283 Kelvin, and this would be a 293 Kelvin. So you can see that the temperature is not twice as much, so be careful not to make that mistake. The second constant that we need here is what we call the emissivity. And the emissivity is, the, is dependent on the property of the material, emissivity. I hope I got that spelled correctly. All right, and usually that number is somewhere between zero and one. So objects that readily radiate out energy, they have an emissivity close to one. And most materials are indeed close to one. When an object doesn't emit radiation readily, then it has an emissivity much closer to zero. For example, aluminum foil has an emissivity of less than 0.1. But in other words, if you put aluminum foil around an object, it is less likely to, to lose heat through, um, through radiation. So if you want to keep food hot and you wrap it in aluminum foil, it will keep hot a lot longer than if you didn't wrap it in aluminum foil. But most other materials are very readily uh, uh, capable of releasing energy through radiation and their emissivity is much closer to one. Matter of fact, I think most materials have an emissivity of 0.9 or greater. All right, knowing all that, let's now um, take a look at an example. Let's say that we have an, an object here where the cross-sectional, or not the cross-sectional area, but the surface area is equal to 2 meters squared 
and let's say that the temperature of this object is equal to, uh, let's say, 20 degrees centigrade, which is equal to 293 Kelvin. All right, so let's plug that into our equation here. Let's say that emissivity is 0 0.9. So in this case, uh, let's say that the emissivity is equal to 0 0.9. What would be the amount of heat radiated from this object? So that is equal to 0 0.9 times sigma, which is 5.67, times 10 to the minus 8, and that would be watts per square meter times um, Kelvin to the fourth power. All right, now we have the cross-section area of two, two meters squared, so you can see that the meter squared cancels out, and a temperature of 293, it's right here, so 293 Kelvin, and that would have to be Raised to the fourth power, now you can see, of course, Kelvin to the fourth, we'll get rid of Kelvin to the fourth over there, which leaves us with watts. And if we then calculate this, we have 0.9 times 5.67 e to the 8 minus uh, times 2 and times 293 square and square again equals, and this is then equal to 752 watts. So an object at this temperature, which is room temperature, would be radiating out energy at a rate of 752 watts, that's 752 joules per second. So you say, wow, wouldn't that mean that the, the, the object would cool and very quickly lose all of its heat? And the answer is no, because at the same time, it would also be receiving radiation heat from its surroundings. And if the amount of heat that it receives equals the amount of heat that it radiates out, then it stays at the same temperature. Now, if it radiates out more heat than it receives, then the temperature will cool down. And then if it receives more energy and it radiates out, then the temperature would go up. And um, so that gives you a kind of a good overview of how to look at heat transfer through radiation.